Hello and welcome to What the Folk. Joining us again for another tale of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. Uh, today I'm going to do something different again. I've kind of been trying to read from a script sometimes. I've been trying to remember, uh, kind of researching and then remembering stories. Today I haven't done any research at all. I'm going purely off memory. And the story that I want to tell is uh, Gawain and the Green Knight. It's a tale that I remember hearing, I, I can't even remember when, um, probably primary school or early, early secondary school, so that's anywhere from, say, th uh, 5 to 13, that's uh, maybe a decade ago for me now. It's definitely an old story and um, one that I can still remember the bulk of, I think, I hope. and. Hopefully I won't be umming and ahhing and pausing too much as I try to recall the tale of uh, Gawain. But I just want to see how it how it comes across, how it comes out. Here we go. Uh, this is the tale of Gawain and the Green Knight. I, I can imagine that the start of the story probably tells of all of the great knights of Arthur's Round Table. Uh, the story begins in King Arthur's court, and uh, start as you mean to go on. And the Green Knight enters the court, clad head to toe in green armour with green skin and green hair, and he bellows a challenge to anyone in King Arthur's court, any man who is brave enough to to challenge him. And he claims that uh, whoever whoever did choose to challenge him would strike him the first blow, and then in three months' time, you know, he would be summoned to the Green Knight's court, and the Green Knight would return the blow. And I believe maybe this would go on, or is just a test of test of valor, test of courage. All of the men quite were quite kind of put off by this. They were quite they were confused. Uh, they were, I guess, fearful uh, of this unusual man with his very unusual challenge. But one man did speak up, one man put himself forth. It was Gawain. He, he agreed to rise to the challenge that was set by this Green Knight, and out in the courtyard drew his sword and struck a, struck a mighty blow to the Green Knight. Uh, cleaving straight for his neck and and beheading the Green Knight. And then the Green Knight bellowed with laughter once again and picked up his head, told Gawain that he would see him in three months' time, and rode, rode off on the horse that was waiting for him outside. Uh, quite perturbed by the sight of the man picking up his head and riding off, Gawain was... Obviously Gawain was fearful of what might happen to him once he reached the Green Knight's castle, but... He made an oath, and in three months' time, he made, he set forth and travelled to the castle of the Green Knight. However, when he got there, the Green Knight wasn't at his court. Instead, the Lord, of, there was a different Lord in charge of the castle, uh, and he lived there with his wife and their servants. And when Gawain entered the castle, he was informed that the Green Knight did come by there regularly and that, I believe, in four days' time, after, after three nights, um, the Green Knight would be at the castle and, and would challenge Gawain once again. Now, the lord of this castle was very fond of hunting, and in these four days, in these four days that, was, that were leading up to the arrival of the Green Knight, he went out hunting each day, and he said to Gawain, when, Once I return from my hunt, uh, you must give me anything that my wife has given you, and in return I shall give you uh, the fruits of my hunt, and we shall feast well, and we shall wait and prepare for the arrival of the Green Knight. Gawain graciously accepts this offer, and while he was staying at the castle, spent quite a lot of time with the with the lady, with the lady of the castle. 
during their first day together, they did grow very close, and they exchanged stories and talked for, for most of the day, and then, and then as the lady was to retire to her bedchamber, she gave Gawain a kiss on his left cheek, and shortly thereafter the lord of the castle returned, and he said to Gawain, now, anything that my wife has given you, you must give to me, and I shall give you what I have found on the hunt this day. So Gawain uh, stands up, greets the Lord, and kisses him on his left cheek. Uh, the Lord is pleased by this, and and hands over to uh, Gawain uh, two grouse that he caught in the yard, and they were cooked in the kitchens, and they ate, and they ate well, and they feasted. And then the second day, the Lord of the of the castle uh, rode out hunting again, and again. Gawain and the lady spent most of the day together talking, exchanging stories, and growing closer. At the end of the day, uh, as the lady was retiring, she kissed Gawain, first on the left cheek and then on the right. And once again, shortly after, the lord of the castle returned. And again, he said, now you must give me anything my wife has given to you, and I shall provide for you what I have caught on my hunt this day. And so Gawain steps up, he greets the Lord and kisses and kisses him on his left cheek and then his right cheek. The Lord is pleased by this, and then they share in the feasting. Uh, this time it was a deer, I believe. <laughs> um, I'm not sure it particularly matters. But they feast well, they converse, they share stories again, and then well feasted, well, well fed. They return. Uh, they return to their bedchambers and sleep for the night. And then on the third day, as he had done before, the lord of the castle rode out, and Gawain and the lady. <coughs> Gawain and the lady uh, traversed the castle, walking around its grounds, spending time together, until, until such point that they both sit down. And the lady explains to Gawain that um, that she has a magical token that will protect him from any blow that the Green Knight will strike upon him. She has grown so fond of him, and she does not want she does not want him to be killed by the Green Knight. And so she uh, hands over to him a green uh, handkerchief, and she says that if you wear this on you, then the blow of the Green Knight will not will not kill you. And then she kisses him on the lips, and and then she retires to her bedchamber and leaves Gawain to wonder about this gift that he has received. After a short while, the lord of the castle returns, and greets and greets Gawain, and says, "Now you must give me anything that my wife has given you this day, and I shall, in return." gift you with what I found on my hunt. Gawain steps up and kisses the Lord on the lips, but does not hand over the token. And then the Lord of the castle apologises to Gawain and says that during the day's hunting he could not find, or they did not find, uh, any game that they could provide for him. Uh, Gawain accepts this and they without feasting, go to retire to their bedchambers, they sleep for the night, and then in the morning the Lord uh, the Lord is not to be found. Uh, Gawain is confused by this, but he is informed by the servants that he has already ridden out uh, to start hunting, uh, embarrassed by the fact that he could not provide anything yesterday. and. Shortly thereafter, or later in the day, uh, the Green Knight approaches the castle, and he shouts down the challenge, this time directly at Gawain, and Gawain meets him with the token that he received the day before. Uh, this time when the Green Knight rides up to the castle, he has in his hands a giant axe, a giant battle axe. He beckons that Gawain should kneel and have his head to the ground before he strikes his blow, and without hesitation, he lifts up his axe as, 
as though he's going to bring it down to Gawain's neck and sever his head from his body, as Gawain had done to the Green Knight. But then he puts the axe to the ground and then speaks to Gawain. He says, he compliments him, he says that he is a valorous knight and it will be a shame, um, it would be a shame for him to die here this day. Gawain thanks him and then the Green Knight again raises his axe. Uh, but then, before the bl before he strikes the blow, he again places it to the ground and says, uh, there are not many who would rise to my challenge, and again I must say um, it will be a great loss, not just to King Arthur's court, but to the knightly, to the knightly order as well. And then, the third time, he raises his axe, and then the Green Knight strikes down with the axe and delivers Gawain a strong blow. And Gawain, uh, screams out in pain, for the Green Knight did not sever his head from his body, but just uh, kind of cut his neck, just a small wound, and the Green Knight says, however, on the third night in my castle you lied to me. You did not give me everything that my wife had given to you, and thus, with my third blow, I did cut you. Let this prove as a lesson to you in the matters of honesty. And then, uh, bending down, he extended his arm to help lift Gawain up, and again, with a full belly laugh, invites him back to the castle for one last night of uh, feasting and revelry, before he would set back to Camelot the next morning. And for one last night they feasted, they feasted and drank well, and in the morning, with his horse repaired, Gawain returned to Camelot, humbled and a bit embarrassed, feeling that it was a worthwhile expedition and a tale to be told. So, hopefully my memory of the story is uh, somewhat close to the actual tale and hopefully you enjoyed in the listening and I'll be sure to, at least for the next uh, Arthurian tale, uh, which I don't remember half as well, I'll be sure to kind of go back to one of my other methods and research it a little bit. Again, I hope you enjoyed listening to my tales and I'll see you again in a fortnight's time for another What the Folk. Thank you for listening and goodbye. <coughs> and strikes Gawain. And strikes Gawain and then telephone!